Hi friends, welcome to another video on Tutorials Point with me Richa. And today we're going to talk about aircraft description. Well, an aircraft is a huge body and to really understand the interior as well as the exterior parts of the aircraft is absolutely imperative and important if you want to get into the aviation industry. Let's see what is there for us in the agenda today. Well, we're going to talk about understanding the exterior parts of the aircraft. We will also understand the interior parts of the aircraft. Talking about the galley system, the exits, which is the normal as well as the emergency exits, water and waste system. Well, we will understand all of these modules in a bit of detail today. Let's look at the exterior part of the aircraft. Well, when we talk about the exterior part of the aircraft, there are different things that we're going to talk about. This is the tail section of the aircraft, which helps in the left and right movement of the aircraft. We have the cockpit right in the front of the aircraft where the pilot as well as co-pilot sits. We have the fuselage. Fuselage is the body of the aircraft right from the front to the back is known as the body of the aircraft. That is the fuselage. Propeller or the engine, uh, well in different airlines or different kinds of airlines or different types of airlines, you have propellers or you have engines, depends on the make of that aircraft. We also have the landing gear which helps during a landing phase of the flight. These landing gears need to come out and they help in the landing of the aircraft. And the wings of the aircraft, the wings of the aircraft help in the left or right movement and also with the yawing of the aircraft that is turning towards one side. Coming to the five basic structural components of the exterior parts of the aircraft. Let's quickly take a look at them. We have the fuselage, which is the body of the aircraft, as we mentioned. We have wings, which is again of different kinds and in different aircrafts, you have different kinds of wings. We have the empennage, which is the tail structure of the aircraft. The entire tail of the aircraft is known as empennage. We have the undercarriage, which is uh, the belly of the aircraft where the cargo or even pets are maintained or kept in that cargo area. And we have the propulsion system, which as mentioned before, depends on giving a drive or a drag to the particular aircraft. So the motion or the energy really comes from the propulsion system of the aircraft. Talking about the fuselage, well, in an aircraft, fuselage is the main body of the aircraft, the main structure which holds everything together, the wings, the engines, the cargo, everything is included in the fuselage of the body. It contains the cockpit or the flight deck crew, which is at the front of the aircraft. It has the passenger compartment where the passengers are sitting and it has a cargo compartment. There are two kinds of cargoes in an aircraft. One is a forward cargo and one is the aft cargo. Well, in the forward cargo, it is air conditioned inside. So in case a passenger wants to carry a pet, for example, it can be a living pet like a dog, a cat, a parrot, rabbit, anything at all. All pets are carried in the forward aircraft, a forward part of the aircraft, which is the cargo compartment. Uh, for the simple reason being that it's air conditioned. So for living uh, things as well as for dead human bodies, if a body has to be carried or dead body has to be carried from one destination to the other, it is to be carried in the forward part of the aircraft or the forward cargo. Uh, well, the fuselage produces a little lift but it can also produce a lot of drag and that is why the fuselage is very, very essential part of the aircraft. Well, next we're going to talk about wings of the aircraft. Wings is the most important part of the aircraft because this actually helps the aircraft in the yawing movement or moving into a little, you know, on the left or the right side of the aircraft. We have the diathril uh, angle as well as we have the other part, which is the diathril um, angle, the left and the right. It is the most important lift producing part of the aircraft. Well, if the wings of the aircraft were not there, lift will not happen at all in the aircraft. So they actually help in the lift of the aircraft. They also carry the fuel. Well, uh, friends, in the wing of the aircraft, underneath the wing is where the fuel tank of the aircraft is there. So the fuel is carried under the wing area. It is designed in such a way that the outer tip of the wings are higher than where the wings are attached to the fuselage. If you have noticed the wings of the aircraft ever, you would see that the wings at the very tip are bended a little bit in the front. So that helps in the lift of the aircraft. 
It produces a little lift, but it can produce a lot of drag. It is called the diathrill because it helps the airline from rolling unexpectedly. If at all the airline might roll to one or the other side, that helps to keep in place with the help of the wings. Well, we have three different types of wing. We have the mid wing, which is located midway, not too much in the front and not too much, you know, at the lower end. We have the high wing where it's even the wing is situated above the cockpit. So where the cockpit uh, crew, the pilot and the co-pilot are sitting, right above their uh, cockpit is the where the wings are kept. So it's a high wing. And we also have the low wing where it is really at a low place in the aircraft, not even at the mid or the high. It is at a low side of the aircraft. Well, let's understand the different wing components. We have the inboard flap. We have the inboard ailerons. We have the outward flap and the output um, ailerons. Now, these ailerons uh, help uh, the aircraft in producing the drag because when the aircraft is really moving forward in the direction it has to go in, these ailerons come up and they help to produce the drag of the aircraft. We have the spoilers uh, at one side, you can see that, and we have the flaps during a uh, landing or takeoff the cockpit crew will uh, you know enhance the flaps of the aircraft which help to produce a little bit of uh, you know a drag of the aircraft and we also have the slat at one side talking about the tail section of the aircraft which is the empennage let's talk about them they are also known as the tail assembly um, the entire back part of the aircraft where the tail is there is known as an empennage it provides stability and control so the entire aircraft's weight and the entire body of the aircraft is held in place with the help of the empennage. It has two main parts, the vertical stabilizer as well as the horizontal stabilizer. The vertical stabilizer to which the rudder is attached and the horizontal stabilizer to which the elevators are attached. Now these elevators and rudders have a very important role to play in the movement of the aircraft from left to right and yawing from side to side. Let's talk about the empennage in a little more detail. We have different things as you can see here on the slide. We have the elevator and the rudders. We have the vertical and the horizontal stabilizer. We also have uh, the elevator, the left fin and the right fin and a twin tail of the aircraft. Uh, if you see over here, we have the T-tail, which is the main part, as well as the rudders and fin. We also have the V-butterfly, which is a part of the tail of the aircraft. So that, my dear friends, is the complete uh, empennage look for you. And these differ from aircraft to aircraft, depending on the make of that aircraft. It could be Boeing or Airbus. Talking about the undercarriage, now undercarriage is actually the belly of the aircraft where the cargo is put in place. Well, they are also known as a landing gear which is made up of struts, wheels and brakes and it can be fixed or retractables. These in the, in the slide you can see that these are landing gears as well as forward nose gear which helps the aircraft in landing as well as um, you know the undercarriage also has the brake system which helps the pilots to brake at a particular position wherever they can do so. Well, talking about the propulsion system, now this propulsion system helps uh, to give the drive or the force for an aircraft to start. Just like uh, in, a, in a car, for example, you have the engine which gives the drive or the, you know, the instigating factor for the car to move forward. In the aircraft, you have the propeller system. Let's take a look at them. It provides thrust for the airplane. Thrust is uh, forward moving always in the direction. Many different types of engines are there, so different aircrafts have different engines. Let's look at them. We have the piston engines and the propellers. We have the turboprops, turbojet, turbofan and scramjet. All the airlines have different kinds of propeller depending on the need of that particular aircraft. They can have turbojets, they can have turbofans, they can have different kinds of jets. So this depends from the aircraft manufacturer to different manufacturers. Talking about the instruments and control, now the instruments and control are uh, most likely located inside the cockpit or the flight deck. This is for the use of pilot as well as a co-pilot. 
So you have supply information on the altitude and the direction. This particular instrument provides the pilot with information on what altitude they are in, how above the ground they are in, how many you know feet they are 30,000 feet or 15,000 or 10,000 feet above the mean sea level. So it gives a direction also of north, south, east or west to the pilot. It has steering in the air and on the ground. Just like you have a steering wheel in a car, in the same way, even inside the aircraft, in the cockpit, you have a steering wheel which a pilot uses on ground to maneuver from left to right or front and back. And you also have this wheel which you can use on air. We have the engine power, how good the engines are working or not working. And the brake system for the captain or the pilot to brake wherever it is necessary. So these were instruments and control which a pilot has for the aircraft. Talking about a particular interior part of the aircraft, so in that particular part we are going to discuss different things. Uh, the interior of the aircraft is as complicated as the exterior part of the aircraft, so I would urge you to pay a lot of attention here. In the front you have the cockpit crew, as you see the nose of the aircraft has the pilot and the co-pilot sitting. Then you have one lavatory here at the front, you have one lavatory in the mid and three lavatories at the back. Now this is a very large aircraft, a Boeing or a Dreamliner, but generally there are three lavatories, one in the forward and two in the aft in a normal Airbus model of aircraft. Well we also have uh, in the, if you can see over here, different type of galleys. So this is a business class as you can see. In the business class you have a separate galley which is the kitchen area through which you can serve the business class or the first class passenger. You have two galleys over here which serves the economy passengers, you know, right from this row to the last row. So uh, the meals for uh, economy passengers or economy class passengers is kept in the galleys in the mid cabin. We also have the UM seat which is the minor or the child who is travelling, he has a specific seat allocated to him. There are seats for handicapped guests also. Uh, in one of the modules we had studied that there are wheelchair passengers who are carried on top of the aircraft. So um, there are certain seats which are reserved for handicapped passengers just for the convenience of their movement in and out of the aircraft. Well you also have the emergency exits. Now in different airlines or different aircraft type, the emergency exit differs from airline to airline. So in most of the airlines there are six emergency exits, two in the forward, two in the aft and two in the wing area of that particular uh, you know, emergency exit or the aircraft that is happening. Over here as you can see there are uh, marked in red that is where the emergencies are used. Now under normal situations. Normal situations you will only have the emergency exits which are two in the front and two at the back of the aircraft. But during an emergency situation the window emergency that is the emergency located at the wing area are also to be used and that is about four of them. So in total there are eight emergency exits, four to be used in the normal situation and all eight of them to be used during an emergency evacuation. Well, uh, let's talk a little bit about the interior parts of the aircraft. We have the passenger seats over here as, and we can see that the seats have a lot of uh, you know, th different things which a passenger can use. Like they have a tray table, they have a PSU which is at the top of the seat. They also have a armrest and a pocket, uh, you know, a seat pocket which has the air sickness bag and also has a safety instruction card. And uh, these are the aisle of inside the aircraft which has illuminated lightning. In case there is a power failure inside the aircraft, these lights will come on automatically and they are illuminant, uh, hence it's called illuminant marking system. Here is the galley, we have a very specific module which talks about the galley and how it functions. Galley is the kitchen part of the aircraft and there are generally two galleys, one in the front and one at the behind or aft section of the aircraft. Talking about some more interior parts, as you can see over here that there is an emergency exit or a door has certain instructions written on them how to open the door in case of an emergency. Now crew knows how to open the door and how to close the door but in case the crew is incapacitated or is not feeling well or has somehow not been able to open the door because of some emergency situation, passengers can read the instructions 
and open the door in case of an emergency. So it's very, very user friendly to do so. And as you can see over here, there are lavatories, again, an interior part of the aircraft, which has all the you know things which passengers might require. It is absolutely considered to be not a great idea to smoke inside the lavatory because of the fact that there is a smoke detector at the top of the lavatory. So passengers are encouraged not to smoke in the lavatory. The cabin intercommunication system Cabin uh, people, that is the flight attendants, talk to each other from front to the back of the aircraft through an interphone which you can see over here. They can talk from forward to the aft section of the cabin. They can also call the captain from the intercom as well as they can address the passengers by the help of a public address system or a PA system. Over here, the cabin crew or the flight attendant can also control certain things on the IFV which is the in-flight entertainment system. She can control the waste and water material. They can also brighten the lights of the cabin or reduce the cabin lights etc. Well over here you can see the different cabin status what a flight attendant can do. She can change the channels, the audio, the volume etc. She can control the lights of the entire cabin, either she wants to brighten the lights or switch off the lights. She can see the doors and the slight status, whether the doors are locked and armed. If it is, it will be in green. If it is locked but not armed, it will be in red. So she can make sure the status of doors as well as slides on the cabin status system. She can also control the temperature of the aircraft. Now if it gets very cold inside the cabin, she can actually decrease the temperature or increase the temperature depending on the need of the passengers in the aircraft. And she also has the water and waste slide uh, you know, on this particular um, page that uh, is there. She can even control the, uh, you know, can see whether waste and water material is up to the mark or no. And by landing at a particular destination, she can tell the ground engineer that waste is a lot and we need the waste to be removed. And the water level in the cabin or galley or lavatory needs to be increased. So this particular page is something that the flight attendant needs to access and she needs to know all of these things. Well friends, that brings us to a conclusion on this particular module and we have discussed a lot about aircraft description here, talking about the interior parts of the aircraft, the exterior parts as well as a lot of other information which we have shared with you today. We hope you have enjoyed listening to this particular module of ours. Thank you for watching us and thank you so much for listening to us.